Hey guys, that is a P3, and that is the Philippines. If you've been following along, you know that I'm in the Philippines flying NASA's vulnerable, venerable, vulnerable, venerable, Lockheed Martin P3 out here at the Philippines. If you've been following along with the channel, then you saw the last video of my travels to get over here to the Philippines for the Earth Science mission called CapEx. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll link it here, right? So if you're new to the channel, my name is Matt Smithers, and this is Unusual Attitudes, the YouTube channel that puts you in the cockpit of some of the world's most unique aircraft. Four, two, six, clear for takeoff, runway one, one. I've been getting a ton of in-aircraft footage over the last couple of flights uh, about the mission, uh, but I've gotten some requests from some, from some, that's really hard to say. So I've gotten some requests from some former colleagues to talk a little less about the mission and a little more about the aircraft. And I'm not going to get too far into the weeds on this uh, and go too, into too many details about the aircraft because I want it to be enjoyable for everybody, but I know a lot of people don't really necessarily know a lot about the P3 Orion. So we're gonna talk about the aircraft today. Every time I come out here to shoot a segment uh, on the aircraft, I forget that we have both the power cart and the air conditioning cart going at the same time all day long. And you can't hear a damn thing I'm saying. So, that's AJ. We can't fly the plane without AJ. Say hi to AJ. AJ's working on the daily. So he's throwing a little bit of lubricant up in the flap tracks to make sure those don't lock up, and get all gross with uh, dust. up here obviously uh, you can see most of the instrument probes that are hanging off the airplane since most of them come off the top and the side nothing to worry about here only instant death on the way down As you can see, the aircraft overall is in really good shape. Uh, we've got four maintenance guys on it right now, and they take really good care of this aircraft. It's always a top priority. Got an exhaust fan trick. Hey, how's it going? So, as I was saying outside, the inside of the plane is in just as good a condition as the outside. And you gotta remember, there's a ton of people walking through here every day. So we've got 23 people on board this aircraft every single flight that we have out here. Now this campaign uh, is a little more populated than the others we've been doing. This is a one-time campaign. Uh, like if you remember Operation Icebridge up in May, uh, I'll give you a couple links up here um, in Greenland. There were fewer instruments on board as well as uh, for Oracle's last year uh, in Sao Tome off the coast of Africa. Again, link. Um, there were fewer instruments. We've got a whole bunch of instruments on board uh, this time around because, again, this is a one-time campaign. OIB was a 10-year campaign. Uh, Oracle's was a five-year campaign, four-year, four or five-year campaign. So multiple outings on those. This is a one-time deal, so it's chock full of instruments from front to back. 
forward to aft. We'll go through and highlight each of these instruments in future episodes, but like I said, today we're gonna focus a little more on the aircraft, a little less on the mission. So, let's take a walk. Here's where all the magic happens. I don't know why it's so green. It looks like we're in the Matrix. But uh, here's the aft galley area. Um, relatively new fridge. It's pretty good. Pretty nice. Our uh, little single serving coffee maker, which really helps when there's 23 people on board trying to get coffee at 5 o'clock in the morning. Overall, the aircraft is in really good shape. As hard as we use this thing, and as many people as are running through here every day, um, it's really amazing how good a condition that the aircraft is in. Floorboards look great, soft panels inside look great, and operationally, man, it's it's really good. Uh, we had to change an EDC a couple of days ago, which is an engine-driven compressor, which is what gives us our air conditioning and pressurization. It's one half of the equation. We have two of them. Um, so we had to replace uh, the one that feeds the flight station last Sunday. It was 104 degrees in the airplane for the last five and a half hours of the flight. Hey, there's Mike! Hello! What's up, Mike? Hey, looks hot out there. Yep, changing your mod valve. Oh, are you doing? Uh, cool. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, sweet. That's Mike. He's the other guy that we can't fly the plane with without. We got four of these guys. They work their asses off all the time. And uh, this would never happen without them. As you can imagine, with all the electronics on board, and especially that huge-ass LiDAR in the back, the laser, the frickin' laser. Laser. Yes. Laser. Thanks for your commentary, Mike. I mean, it was just stupid hot. So now that you know a little bit about this P3, let's talk about the P3 in general, uh, if you're not really familiar with it. I realize that not all viewers know everything about the Lockheed Martin P3. I jump on the C-130, and then I jump over on the P3, and then I jump over on the Super Guppy. And I just sort of assume everybody knows as much about it as I do. So let's put up a little history lesson, shall we? In 1958, Lockheed Martin was awarded the contract by the U.S. Navy to build a maritime patrol and anti-submarine warfare aircraft. Lockheed decided that modifying an existing aircraft would save cost and allow rapid introduction into the fleet, and therefore decided to modify its L-188 Electra. The first flight of that modified prototype, designated Yankee Papa, 3 Alpha took place on 19 August 1958. Developed during the Cold War, the P-3's primary mission was to track Soviet Navy ballistic missiles and fast attack submarines. The P-3's role has been greatly expanded in the U.S. over the years to include command and control, search and rescue, electronic intelligence in the case of the EP-3, and most recently, anti-drug ops in the war against drugs. And while this last picture really doesn't show you much of the P-3, it was taken at VP-5 during my time there and includes my buddy Tony Versage, who was a classmate of mine in my FE class way back in 2002, as well as Diaz, who's helping to change the tire. Well, folks, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video about the P-3 and more specifically NASA's P-3 and what we're doing with it on this mission called CapEx. Well, if you enjoyed this video, it would be really helpful if you'd click that thumbs up. And if you like everything else that I'm putting out on the channel, please consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference and it allows me to continue putting out great content like this for you guys to enjoy. There are more P3 videos coming, and then there's going to be some Guppy videos, and before too long, there's going to be more C-130 videos coming too. I'm also making arrangements for other videos about civilian aircraft. That way the channel isn't only about NASA aircraft. While those aircraft are certainly pretty cool to watch, there's a lot of other aircraft to cover. So, stick with me, those are coming, and I really appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day.